Hello and welcome back to my channel. About seven months ago, I uh, installed stronger aftermarket upper control arms on the Silverado. Uh, everything's been working out real good so far. Uh, nothing's broke or anything like that. But the supplied rubber dust boots, after one winter, and this is like seven, eight months ago at this point, uh, have split. They're junk. I don't know what recycled material they could have possibly made this stuff out of, but they're just, they're crap. So now I got to replace them. So I went on the internet and I'm trying to find a new replacement for them. And maybe you guys can find them. I couldn't. You just can't buy a separate Moog rubber boot. You have to buy the ball joint and you get the boot with it. And I really didn't want to buy a new one anyway because I knew that it would last a summer and then a year later I'd be replacing the damn thing in again anyway. And who wants to do that shit every year? So I looked for something better and I found some energy suspension stuff. And I'll show you that right here. So I went on, you know, Amazon, and I thought that, you know, I'll just order some some rubber boots, you know, and that'll be the end of it. Well, I forgot how big the damn ball joint was, and I ordered these jobs right here. I'll show you the, that's the part number, all that stuff, okay, and when I get to the ball joint, they are hideously too small. So, I have to now find the right size. And I found these guys right here because the, the large end of the boot where this, this part seats down onto, you know, when it's all put together and it's kind of like gets smooshed together. This is, on the, on the ball joint, it's 50, 51 millimeters wide. So I'm like thinking to myself, am I going to be able to find something this big? You know, an energy suspension. And you know what? They make one. And it's this guy right here. And I don't have uh, the part number right now. But in the course of the video, uh, you'll see uh, some screenshots from their website. It'll have the part number on it and all that and the measurements that it has and stuff like that. So uh, if you run into this problem, you can order these. And this is how I solve this problem because even though this is the right, this, this is going to cover the, cover up the boot or cover up the ball joint and all that kind of stuff, this opening right here is too big for the tapered shank. And this is where the wrong ones come into play and I'll be showing that here to you here in a couple minutes okay so we got the ball joint finally off the truck I was having some difficulty with it because that sucker was really in there so so anyway <clears throat> what I was saying before down to this part right here is 50 to 51 millimeters wide running all the way around here and uh, searched up and down on the internet and so this is a solution I came up with uh, let me get the old one out of the garbage here just to show you what I mean so yeah this one's got a plate on it and all that and that's really cool and everything but you know when they split open like this and don't hold the grease in and let water and all that other junk in there it ain't doing shit for you so <clears throat> so this one fits right over it goes right down in there. It's not snug. It wobbles around a little bit, but this is the best solution I can come up with for now. Uh, this is the solution I came up with, and this involves the mistake I made when I ordered these these little jobs right here. So this is what I'm going to do. What you do is you take the little one and you cut four cuts in it right up to where this point is here where it starts to angle right 
and I'll get that done and I'll show you here in the next the next cut here okay so I made the cuts and this is what I'm talking about right kinda like right up to this angle right here right all the way around four is all you need hopefully it don't splay out in there as thing as time goes on but this is gonna help encapsulate so this goes on the ball joint like so and you're gonna meet some resistance here because this taper is gonna spread that out and that's what you want anyway to help and keep that grease from seeping through the seeping through so now so you get the you get this to splay out and I'll zoom in a little bit better here my greasy fingers there we go all right so this you get the idea right here you can see that pie cut coming out all right so now you got this all the way down there right and then this the big one goes right on top all right and when you put it in, and I'll show you when I put this in, there's this like it, it's it's just making it like to hold this in. So I found a big washer, and this is gonna go in as well, and this will fill, and as this taper goes in, it's gonna stop, and it just stops like within a millimeter or two of like really squashing against this and making this seal. So I found a, a washer out of my parts bin. I got two, two of these. I mean, it don't have to be this big to go out on the end and all that junk, but uh, it was just. So what you want to do is too before you do that. When you when you you want to make sure that it'll go down. Let me show you. I want to make sure I do this right. So. We want to make sure that it'll go, you know, it'll slide up and down because when I when I first got these, these were just like, it was stopping right here and I don't want this smooshing in and fuck, you know, tearing uh, tearing up the taper. So I, I, I honed out the center here so it it's all sliding and everything clears out and all that kind of stuff. So that's just me. So you put this thing back on here. This is the solution I've come up with. This probably ain't the best one. There's probably a better part out there, but this is what I'm this is how I'm rolling. So I get this all the way smushed down on there right. And this guy's gonna go on. And then you put it on, put that on, and when you do that and tighten the nut, you know, and everything comes together, this will press in and keep this cup up in there and and when you see it in there, you'll be able to see that how the how it's constructed will actually capture the bottom of this a little bit and keep it all together. And I think that'll really do a real a pretty good job of keeping keeping the world out of there. So moving forward, we'll put it on the truck, and uh, you can see that part next. And here we have the final installation. So, also I want to mention, you know, anything that's like an off-name brand, like these A-arms I got, I can't remember what the heck the name of them are anymore, I'd have to go back and look, but the hardware I got to put the ball joint in, uh, when I started this whole rubber boot thing, they were just like rusty, as a, rust, they're rusty. And I thought, you know, this is just some cheap pop metal, steel, who knows what it is from China that was polished and made look pretty. And hopefully it was zinc coated, but it wasn't. It was just plain steel, all that kind of stuff. So I went out and got some grade 8 bolts. And uh, I put jam nuts on top. That's what you see there. So here is the boot. And you can see that it's all together and uh, it's being up against the bottom here. It's all sealed up pretty good. 
and uh, the washer's helping too, of course. I mean, if you wanted to like put a, that one's probably two millimeters thick. If you wanted to go like a sixteenth of an inch, which is a little thicker, and put something nylon on there, that's what I would prefer. But I think this is going to work just fine for what it's for what it's doing. So this is this is my this is my solution to my piece of crap Moog boot that split open on me seven months ago that I put these on and had to spend a Saturday morning farting around with this thing. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe and share. Have a good summer.